and welcome to the Canterbury Campus Open Day. We'll be finding out a little bit more about what it's like to study here at the University of Kent and also what it's like to live here. But first, let's hear from the Vice-Chancellor and the Deputy Vice-Chancellor about what they have to say about the University. Hello, my name's Karen Cox and I'm the Vice-Chancellor here at the University of Kent and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our University Open Days. I hope that you find all that you need to know about studying here at the University. It is really a fantastic place to live, to learn and to study and I'm really pleased that you've chosen us as a potential place for you to think about your University career. From day one you'll experience our excellent teaching whether that's online or in person, in our laboratories, classrooms or studios. We have excellent facilities here, excellent staff and you'll also be exposed to world-class research. The University of Kent is a really friendly and supportive community. You'll have lots of opportunities to meet new people, to meet people from around the world and that is just such a fantastic opportunity for broadening horizons and for thinking about the kind of career that you want in the future. You'll also have lots of support to help you study and make the most of your time. And there's loads of clubs, societies and volunteering opportunities as well. It really is a fantastic place to be. I look forward to welcoming you to our university, our community, and to also helping you think about your future while you're with us. Hello. Um, so that was great to hear from the Vice Chancellor there. And here is Rodri. You're going to be our roving reporter today, finding out about the University of Kent. So tell me, what are you going to discover today, and where are you going to be? Well, we're going to be placed in Grimmond for most of the day. A uh, little detour to the sports centre as well. We're just hoping to find out a bit about what life is like as a student here and what's actually on offer here at Kent. That's exciting. And you were actually a student here. And how did you find it? Well, I wasn't actually based in this campus for the first three years of my study because I studied journalism. I was on the Midway campus and I really loved it there. I loved it so much I thought, you know what, I'll do another year. So I did a year in French, which was based in here. Um, and yeah, I, I really loved it. I really enjoyed my experience. Well, I'm still here now. So well, yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. But we'll uh, see Rodri all around the campus and we'll be back right after this break. Hello, I'm Professor Georgina Ransley Demora. I'm Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Strategy, Planning and Performance at the University of Kent. I'd like to welcome you to the University of Kent and to our open day today. I hope you feel at home and that we'll be welcoming you here as a student in the future. If you're here supporting a friend or family member today, a very warm welcome to you too. I've often been asked what makes Kent special and I always have the same answer. It's our people. Our students and colleagues create an incredibly welcoming, inclusive and friendly community, which you will experience as you walk across campus. After a very short time being here, you will always bump into someone you know. Our students have described Kent as amazing, exciting and life-changing, and there are many reasons why, but our campuses are definitely one of them. They're the perfect backdrop to your university experience and a safe and welcoming place to make your home away from home. They'll be where you make lifelong friends and create memories to treasure. You'll have mammoth study sessions in the library, transformative classes, and have nights out that you'll probably still be laughing about in 20 years time. If you're at the Canterbury campus today, you'll see how beautiful and green it is as you walk around. Make sure you take in the spectacular view of the city and Canterbury Cathedral from the slopes by the library. It's one of the most popular places on campus, especially for revision, picnics and relaxation. If you're staying for longer, you might explore Canterbury. Here you'll find plenty of lovely independent shops, bars and cafes. Kent is a beautiful county and is just under an hour away from London on the train. Our campuses are on bus routes, which makes exploring the local area easy and affordable. We're incredibly lucky to be near the sea with miles of stunning coastline close by. It's a lovely place to live and study and many of our students remain in the area after they've graduated. Another reason our students describe Kent as life-changing is because every year 
Kent students and graduates achieve amazing things. They make a global impact working for international organisations. They launch businesses and social enterprises. We have lots of students who've made their mark in media, music and sport. You'll probably learn more about them today. Reaching your potential goes beyond getting a great degree and we offer an array of opportunities to develop your skills and confidence. For example, we offer a pioneering business startup journey programme to help launch your enterprise. Alongside careers talks, workshops and fairs, we also have strong industry networks and opportunities to secure a work placement. Building your future career or careers isn't about waiting for graduation, it's about what you can do along the way. And we're here to help you with that, to hone your skills, develop your networks and raise your profile. We give you the freedom to be yourself, to try new things and dream big. The sky is the limit and that's why our students say their time at Kent is life-changing. Enjoy your visit with us today. Remember to ask lots of questions, picture yourself here and take the time to absorb as much as you can. But if you have any questions, there will always be someone to help you and you can come back for another visit before you join our world.
again. I'm Isabel and I'm here to guide you through what the University of Kent is like to study and live at. And I'm here with Nell. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet so you So let's too. start off with um, talking about the University of Kent. What is it like to be here? Well, I've been here for about four months now. I work in marketing and student recruitment, so my job really is to make sure that everyone who's thinking about going to university knows all about the fantastic facilities and courses and experience that they can have here at the University of Kent. Exciting, and tell me about your experience. You're pretty new here, right? I am new here, but one thing that um, really struck me when I started here was how friendly everyone was, how welcoming they are, and what a lovely community spirit is. It's a really vibrant, lively, active community, um, and I'm sure anyone who starts here will have an absolutely fantastic time. And tell me about the actual city of Canterbury. Isn't it pretty beautiful? Isn't it? it is absolutely beautiful. It's very quaint. Um, of course, there's the cathedral, and it is, it's a real seat of learning. Um, but the uh, links that the university have with the Canterbury are really solid. So anyone who studies here and finishes their course here graduates at that, uh, in, in the Canterbury and what a fantastic opportunity that is. Yeah, and why should students come here? Or potential well, students? Yeah, potential <laughs> yeah. students. Well, I, I think it is because the university really cares. It's a really caring university um, and it cares about its students and its students' ambitions for the future. Um, and uh, that's something that, as I said, really struck me when um, I first uh, started here was the support for the students, no, no matter what kind of support you, you'll be looking for, whether it's support in making friends, you can make friends where you live, on your course, um, and also joining clubs. There's so many clubs to join, whether it's sports or, or any other activity. So my advice to students um, starting at Kent would be to join in, to make use of the fantastic facilities, fantastic opportunities, and just enjoy themselves. Yeah, put yourself out there and see what happens. Absolutely. And just finally, just uh, tell me what it's like to live here at the University of Kent. Well, look at, look at where we are. <laughs> look at the beautiful uh, environment we're in, the lovely green spaces. It's obviously a very nice day to day, but even uh, in the winter months, there's always something happening and you can get outside, get in, out in the fresh air. If it's a, a chance to get away from your studies or a chance to take part in sport, go and see our wonderful sports facilities, yes. the gym, but also the wonderful playing fields, the tennis courts. There's just so much to do here. So as you said, yes, just get stuck in um, and enjoy yourself. Well, thank you very much. We'll be seeing some of those facilities soon. And, um, yeah, speaking of living, um, we've got accommodation here waiting for you to all view. So we have Darwin, Keynes, Parkwood, Turing, Wolf, Beckett and Tyler Court. So there's a lot of choice for you. Uh, so you can have self-catered and park-catered, and there are options to accessible and adapted rooms. But we can talk more about the amazing facilities there are here on campus. But first, let's take a look at the accommodation. Hello everyone, my name is Will and I am a recruitment officer here at the University of Kent and these are my top tips when applying for accommodation. Here at the University of Kent we have over 5,400 rooms available on our Canterbury campus and 1,100 rooms at our Medway campus. However, the rooms are not all the same. We understand that everyone has their own individual preferences. Some people want more privacy, others may not want to cook. So with ensuite double rooms to share twin rooms, self-catered and part-catered, there are options to suit everyone's needs. My first tip, Narrow down the room that suits your budget. Some rooms are more expensive than others. Second tip, take a visit virtually. You may want to get a feel for where you'll be staying. Last but not least, know the deadlines for when you need to apply for accommodation by. You don't want to miss out on your potential student pad. For more information, check out our website, kent.ac.uk forward slash accommodation for virtual tours.
Hi, I'm Rodri and I'm stood outside Temple Men at the moment and as you can see behind me is Canterbury Cathedral. The city here in Canterbury is one that's truly historic but it's one that feels young and vibrant with such a good student community here. It's one that's got a lot of nightlife options if that's your thing or if you want something a bit more chill you can just head down to the river, enjoy, enjoy the scenery that is here in Canterbury, maybe sit, sit by the river, read your book but you've also got plenty of options for entertainment. If you're a bit of a sports fan, you've got the cricket right here in Canterbury. Or if you're a bit more of a football fan, you can head down to Gillingham, which is just about a half hour train journey, and watch some League Two football. It truly is a hub of student activity, but culture here in Canterbury. And you, you've got the travel links as well with two stations in the heart of Canterbury that you can easily get across Kent or into London and explore and find yourself within this city and on this campus. Thank you. The biggest ideas can come from far and wide. From people who haven't even discovered their path yet. When the whole world is changing, if you can come with ambition and an open mind, then anything is possible. It's an opportunity to make connections and friendships that last a lifetime. An opportunity to create a legacy. Success isn't always measured by gains, but by impact. How impactful can you be? I know what kind of world I want to live in, and it's not just going to happen. We have to build our future. Step out of your comfort zone. And look forward to a better tomorrow. This. This. This is our time. All journeys start with a single step. A spark of curiosity, a new perspective, a connection to the possible. Find your meaningful connections and become part of something bigger. Wherever your journey takes you, make the connections that matter at the University of Kent.
I'm Isabel. I'm back again to talk a little bit more about the University of Kent experience. I've got myself a nice latte from the Gold Banking. Go get yourself one. It's a warm day. It's delicious. But we're actually going to talk to Rodri, who's going to tell us more about what it's like to experience Canterbury and the University of Kent. So, Rodri, tell us a little bit about what it's like and what you think it's like to be here on this beautiful place. Well, I never actually lived in Canterbury during my studies, but I studied here for the last year. And the thing I really loved most out of everything here is during the winter, they do a nice gingerbread latte in the library cafe. And it's not quite, maybe not quite a nice latte as you've got there, but a coffee is important when you're a student, especially with the long hours. And you've got plenty of options here in terms of coffee and for food here on campus. You've got the library is, is great, and then you've got Cafe Nero just next door, then that co-op as well. So you, you're really kitted out as a student here, and you do feel well looked after. You've got plenty of facilities, really everything you would want as a student right here on campus. And there are lots of places to go in the city centre too. I mean, how long is the walk and, and what can people do? There are theatres, bars, restaurants, all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it, it, it's not a very long walk at all, maybe half an hour. And it's actually quite a nice walk because you're walking down the hill that you, can, you could see earlier before. It's just a nice, very green, scenic walk down. And then you've got plenty of bars uh, and places to eat, really. You've got everything you can think of in Canterbury. And Canterbury's really got that nice mix of the, the places you know, the chains, and then some nice independent places. One I really like is called... The Penny Theatre, which uh, we've visited many a time, and you've got plenty of places in terms of going out for drinks, or if you just want a nice feel, a meal of really any kind of food that you can think of. It, it truly is a nice city to be around and live in. Yes, and very historic, isn't it? It's got a cathedral, it's got all of that, cobbled streets and some nice gardens and stuff. So if you want to relax and take in the nature, there's plenty of that in Kent as well. So exciting stuff that potential students might want to go and see after they've visited the University of Kent campus. The city, as you say, is pretty close. And there's some exciting things to do here on campus on the open day. I actually heard there's an ice cream van. There is indeed. Um, we're actually stood right next to it as we speak. And I think, if, if I'm allowed, I may get a Flake 99, if that would be okay. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, you've got the co-op nearby. So if you're not fancying an ice cream, maybe just a cold drink, pop in there, get what you like. But for me, I'll be taking a Flake 99. Thank you very much. And cheers. Uh, back to you, Izzy. <laughs> I might have to go get one myself. That looks very refreshing. I'm glad you got a sweet treat. Um, yeah, so the next video that we've got for everyone to watch, um, our dear friend Oga, she has done a walkthrough of the Canterbury campus, so um, enjoy. Hi, my name is Ogar. Welcome to the University of Kent's Canterbury campus. So this is Templeman Library. It's got so much study spaces for you and your friends to get some work done. It's got over a million books and journals for you to do your work. And also the library staff are a dedicated team of people to help you and answer any questions that you might have. So welcome to the plaza, this is normally where the hub of activity takes place on campus. There's loads of places to eat and drink with your friends with, there's also a bookshop and also one of the two of the co-ops on campus. Behind me is a sports centre here at the University of Kent. There's something for everyone. There's a gym, fitness and dance studios, martial arts training areas and even a physio clinic. With sport and fitness at the University of Kent, you name it, we got it. Not far from the sports centre, you have Parkway Student Village, 
Parkwood is an amazing place to meet amazing people. I met some of my best friends here in my first year. There's other areas to live on campus, such as Keynes, Turin and Darwin. Parkwood is next to our campus pub Woodies, which is a great place to relax and socialise with friends. So across the street from Parkwood, you have the sports field and the pavilion. On Wednesdays, sports teams can be found training or playing against other unis. So we're back in the centre of campus and we're outside the Gulbenkian. The Gulbenkian is a place of entertainment here on campus. It's a cinema, it's a theatre, it's also got a music hall called the Collier Ferguson. But the Gulbenkian has so many shows, whether that's comedy, theatre, dance, and if you're part of a performance society here at the University of Kent, you might have the opportunity to perform here just like I did when I was a student. So saving the best place for last, it's many people's favourite places on campus. It's the one and only, the Campus Green. It's got a wonderful view of the cathedral, plenty of wide open space, and what better view to have of the city of Canterbury. My name's Amelia and I'm a second year forensic science student and these are my friends. Hi, I'm Shemek. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shemek. I study biomedical sciences. I'm a second year student. Hi, I'm Katie. I study forensic I'm a first year student. And today we're going to be showing you our favourite places in Canterbury. So let's jump go! right into it. Let's go! Woo! <laughs> Once. At least once in the summer. Yeah. At least once in the summer because it's, it's really nice and um, it's a really good view. Yeah, it has a really good view of the cathedral, and that will be our next stop. Ooh. Yes, we're here. This is a must-see place. This, this is an is iconic place. This is what makes Canterbury it. Cathedral. This is the oldest cathedral in England. Facts. Wow. If you're ever in Canterbury, definitely come see the cathedral. This is Cafe Chambers and they do really good pancakes and brunch. They also have loads of vegan options and they've decorated the place so nicely and they've also got like a cute little garden area outside uh, which has a really good view of the cathedral. And then literally right opposite is this chocolate cafe um, and if you've got a sweet tooth like me I think you'd also really like it. favourite place in Canterbury, Westgate Gardens! Westgate Gardens. Get a round of applause. Yeah. This is a great place to take picnics in the summer. And take lots of really good Instagram pictures. <laughs> as well as mental health walks after stressful exams. Yes, yep, period. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, the scenes here are just beautiful and perfect for distressing. You can feed the ducks and just mess around and have fun. Uh, here's us playing a stick game. But one of my favourite activities to do in Canterbury would be to definitely do water sports along the river. Uh, here's me and my friends kayaking in the summer. It was such a good time and if you can only do one thing in this video, it would definitely be to go along the river. 
now we just wanted to show you our favorite tree <laughs> um it's just a really thick tree um and we find it really funny uh so if you're in canterbury try see if you can try and spot it and with that that concludes our vlog we hope you guys enjoyed and that this gave you some insight into canterbury thanks for watching bye, bye. bye. bye.
I'm Isabel and I'm here to show you what the University of Kent is like. I'm here with Annie Etier, a recruitment officer, to talk a little bit more about the University of Kent, but also you guys who are actually thinking about studying at university. So firstly, why should students maybe consider the University of Kent? All right, um, good morning everyone. I think you should consider the University of Kent because we're a university that touch with three parameters every student will always think about when you're thinking about going to university, which is the academic benefits. Uh, we have top-notch um, professors and lecturers who are the leaders at the forefront of that program you'll be learning. In terms of research, we have a research excellent framework rating of gold. We also have a teaching excellent framework rating of gold as well. So it means what you'll be learning will be up-to-date information by leaders of that program in that industry, technically. Um, in terms of the social benefits, we have a good student union uh, run by students for 100% benefit of students. Uh, the student union has over 150 uh, clubs and societies you can belong to. Um, it's always a great time to enjoy university and the student union will play a major role in that part. The student union also helps students get uh, part-time jobs through the job shop and um, it's run by students and your whole social beats of university will be covered by the student union. And then the third parameter is your career. Going to university is an investment and you expect returns on investment, all right? So we have the careers and employability service that works with you for your first year to ensure you are career ready, all right? They help you with guide you on how to do a good CV, prepare you for mock interviews. They also do employability festivals where organizations come and then students can ask specific questions on how to get into those organizations, just getting you career ready eventually. And this service is available to all students up to three years after graduation. So we touch the three parameters uh, students think about when you're considering university. Yeah, and what would you say to those people who are thinking, oh gosh, I don't even know what to study, let alone consider university? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay to not be entirely sure at this point uh, when you're in high school. Uh, but one thing you're sure about is there's a couple of programs you like, right? So if you don't like mathematics, you know at this point, right? So two things you can do, you can either select a program in line with your academic strength, so you excel in it, or if you already have an idea of the career you want to do, you can select a program in line with that career. And one good thing about the University of Kent is that we have over 400 programs to pick from. We also have joint honors programs, so if you're caught in between two programs, like if you like law and economics, you can do a joint honors in law and economics. If you like law and politics, you can do law and politics, law and criminology, law and sociology, law and management. So there's opportunity for joint honors programs and that will help you uh, make your decision easily. Yeah and you can do year in programs for example and you know I guess the main thing is to say like obviously preparation is key but also um, there are options like clearing so just like don't panic there exactly. are, other, are like other yeah. options right? <laughs> exactly so clearing is how universities fill up space they still have by result day. So uh, whatever your result is, obviously study for your A stars, but just in case you fall short, don't panic, pick that phone up, ring the University of Kent, and then the team will be there to put you through on how to still make it in true clearing, all right? Yeah, and uh, what advice do you have for those students considering university? I mean, you must get asked a lot of questions, right? What, what comes up? Yeah, we are, when we go for different events, we, we hear different questions. Most people are not really sure about what they want to do. Uh, but what I'll say is always do quality research. Go to the university's um, website and play around the course page. Like I just said, if you're selecting a program in line with your academic strength, you can go to the course page of that program, check out the course modules that will run on that program. The course modules are the topics you will learn in that program, and you want to be sure it is exactly in line with your academic strength, all right? So it's possible for two universities to offer the same program, but they'll have different course modules. So always play around the course page of the university you have in mind, and then check out the course modules, and take advantage of things like open day, 
thanks to many people that have turned out today. Uh, we also have applicant days where people that have made applications can also come. So take advantage of things like this. Check out the campus, check out the accommodation, and check out um, tester lectures to have a first-hand taste of what university is like. Amazing, and um, there are places like the university website that do like virtual tours if you aren't able to make it today, but if you are, definitely go and check everything out as well as the city centre. Um, just lastly, I know um, this comes up a lot, like people are actually a little bit intimidated, scared by university because, you know, friend making and all of that pressure. What would you say to those people? I think uh, university is just a place where you can like start afresh. Um, if you're not really happy with your social life uh, in high school, remember you're going to be coming from different regions of the country and even different countries entirely. At the University of Kent, we have the representation of over 150 nationalities. So you have the opportunity to make new friends. You might just end up having a friend from Africa, South America, Australia. And most of your friends at university will end up being your friends for life. And you might end up doing business across borders with them eventually. So don't be scared about the social bits of university. It's a good time to start all over. Uh, like I said, the Kent Union will help you along the line. And there are also clubs and societies to join uh, if you want a sense of belongingness. And that will keep you active all through your study at the University of Kent. Yeah, and there are things like years abroad and oh, like industry, yeah. and that's like huge to employers that actually want to see that you've got those hand-on experiences with businesses. And yeah, we, we call them the sandwich years. So you do your first two years of study with us, and then in your third year, you can either go for a year abroad or you can go for a paid placement, all right? If you choose to go for a year abroad, we have a support team that will work with you from your first year to ensure you get uh, the year abroad opportunity. Based on our proximity to the rest of Europe, we are known as the UK's European University. So we have lots of affiliation. And when we say you, there's opportunity for a year abroad, we actually give you that support and ensure you have a year abroad. And then you can come back in your fourth year and round up your studies. Same with a year in industry. You get paid for that. You have the opportunity to bring your ideas, uh, you bring your new technology ideas to the running of that organization, help them uh, break boundaries. And then most students that do well during the placement usually get uh, job opportunities with those organizations upon completion of their study. We also have what we call the year in programs, where you can come from any background whatsoever to come and do a year in computing or a year in business analytics or a year in journalism or a year in languages. Or and TV this will as well. always your TV yeah. <laughs> so these things just make your C V more outstanding and make you a preferred candidate for employment upon graduation. Amazing. And just lastly, is there anything else that you want to say, a message you want to send to all of those people that are here today or joining virtually? Yes, so um, Try to take advantage of the general talks like Life at Kent, student finance talk to know how you can um, take advantage of the financial um, support from the government in terms of going to university. Also look out for subject specific lectures where you have a first hand knowledge of what that program will be like and then have a free wonder about check out the library, check out the accommodation, check out the facilities and experience our beautiful campus as you make up your mind about the University of Kent. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. I feel like yeah. that's helped a lot of people. So thank you very yeah. much. And you've got some talks coming up as well. Definitely. So check those yeah. out. Where are they? Yes, yeah, so I'll be doing the student finance talk yep. at Grimmon Lecture Theatre 3 uh, from 12.30. I'll be doing four talks today on student finance. Great. And that's just behind the Templeman Library if yeah, you need to find Yeah, definitely, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that's amazing. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, just with any course, um, you know, there's always something about the course at the University of Kent that makes it unique. So I guess just ask someone and get to know and really take advantage of the open day today. Um, so that's it for this bit. And um, yeah, we'll see you after a nice break. Thanks for having me. Hello everyone, my name is Kay and I'm a recruitment officer here at the University of Kent and these are my top tips for choosing a course and university. The first thing and most obvious is to decide on your area of study. However, it is important to remember that courses with the same title may teach very different content. So ensure you are utilising the UCAS course finder and looking on specific university course pages. 
Secondly, you need to decide what is important to you when it comes to studying a subject at university. Is it employability prospects, the chance to travel, or is it course reputation? For example, some universities, like here at Kent, offer some of their courses with a year abroad or year in industry options, so doing your research is absolutely vital. Lastly, remember you can shape your own degree. Each university will teach and assess their students differently, so figure out what your strengths are and you can work around those. For more information, check out our courses at kent.ac.uk forward slash courses and good luck. Hello everyone, my name is Will and I'm a recruitment officer here at the University of Kent. And here's some guidance for choosing between campus university versus city university. Some students prefer to have all their amenities and facilities on one site. Others prefer the hustle and bustle of city life. With city universities, you are close to the bars, restaurants and shops. However, accommodation and lecture theatres may be spread out around the city. With campus universities, your lectures, accommodation and shops are all short fall out of better way. Here at the University of Kent Medway campus and Canterbury campus, you have everything you need and you're still only a 10 minute bus ride into town. On campus, we have our library, lecture theatres, accommodation, cinema, gym, nightclub, bars, two co-ops, laundry service and a whole load more. So when applying for university, make sure you pick what works best for you. If you want to check out our campuses, we are hosting virtual tours. So please visit our website, kent.ac.uk forward slash visit for more details.
Hi, it's me, Rodri again, and I've just finished my ice cream. And I thought, you know what? I've come for a spot of mini golf. The campus here obviously has a wide range of sports societies on offer. So I thought, I'll give it a go with the mini golf here. And it's going to be a bit tricky because I've got a microphone, so I'm going to have to do it one handed, but I will try my best. Here we go. And I did not do too great. We didn't get the hole in one. But um, maybe if you come along, give it a go. You might do a bit of a better job than me trying to do it with a microphone. Now you've got a video of, a, um, of the sites around Kent and what you can see in, in, in the countryside that surrounds this beautiful county.
I'm Isabel and I'm back again to tell you a little bit more about the University of Kent and what it's like to study and live here and I'm joined by Hannah. Hello, Hi. you are a very recent graduate of the University of Kent, aren't you? So tell me about you and your course. Okay, so I'm graduating this year with politics and law with a year in journalism. So it's a lot. <laughs> so tell me about your course. How did you find it? I mean, law's pretty tricky as well as politics, right? Yeah, so even though I did politics and law, I spend the majority of my time doing law because my degree comes with a qualifying law degree, if that makes sense, and politics as well. Um, but yeah, no, I really enjoyed my time at the law school. Very supportive, especially with my dissertation and final year, because obviously with COVID, I did that remotely. So imagine, like, I never met my dissertation supervisor. Like, I never went to his office. It was all through Zoom and um, through emails, but the support that I received was really helpful. And yeah. Yeah, and you did time. pretty well in the end, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, no, I did. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, tell me about the year in journalism. How did you find that going from, you know, a three-year course to doing a year in something different? Yeah, so I didn't really know what I wanted to do after I finished my original undergrad. So obviously because the uni offers a lot of year-in courses, I thought I might as well do something instead of just spending the year doing nothing. Um, but yeah, no, the adjustment was really well. The CF, so the school... You, the year in journalism is in Medway, and yeah, the the whole like the teachers, staff were really helpful, and I, I enjoyed my time there as well. Yeah, and when you were in like sixth form college, um, did you know what you wanted to do, or was it like, oh, I think I have an interest in this, so let's go for it? So I actually originally wanted to become a human rights lawyer, which is why I studied law. But I've always been really interested in journalism, and it's been something that I've definitely wanted to tap into. And while I was at uni, and I saw the year in journalism course, I was like you know what, let me do it. Yeah, and do I might you, as well. Exactly, yeah. And do you think it's kind of like opened up the path for different kind of careers? Yeah, 100%, because doing the year in journalism course, I was able to get the internship that I'm doing right now with KMTV, and that's opened me, like that's made me realise that I enjoy this and that I definitely would want to go into this, whereas before that, I don't really know what I'd be doing. So I definitely think the university has given me opportunities to definitely think more about what I want to do when I'm older. Yeah, and there are so many like limitless possibilities to what you can do as well, which is exciting. Yeah. And um, tell me about, you know, actually being at the University of Kent. Did you find it a nice place to be, make friends and all yeah, of that? Yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed my time here. Um, yeah, Canterbury is just such an amazing town. I. I don't know, with town, like, I I generally loved going there. Like, I'd go there just randomly in the middle of the day. And where I lived in second year, it was a really good location. It was near uni and near town as well. So I was able to spend a lot of my time commuting. But unfortunately, because of COVID, that did, you know, cause some kind of diversion with my uni experience. But other than that, like, I met some amazing people on my course, um, at socials, with societies, and yeah, I enjoyed my time. Yeah, and just the fact that that happened and you still got through it and yeah. you got a good grade and yeah. you had fun and, yeah, that's really exciting. I mean, what advice would you give to people that just, like, maybe you wish you knew before you went to uni, those year 12s, fresh, ready to go? I'd say be patient with yourself. Adjusting to university is something that is difficult, but as long as you're patient with yourself, you'll be fine. And also reach out for help. There are people here who will genuinely help you, like you're not alone, whether it's with educate, like your uni studies, whether it's with your social life, whether it's with you. There are there is so much support at this university so you're never alone and there's always someone who will listen to you if you need to be heard yeah and where can you go for support because it's so, a big deal at the yeah university, so there's it? student support they offer i know they offer like like educational help but they also have like um counseling and therapists if if you're going through something um within your like your school there's always there's always be a student support as well within them within the department sorry so then you can go talk to them you i think we had I, i'm pretty sure i had like a student like a student mentor when i was in first year so you can talk to them as well obviously your academic um advisor that's number one i should have said that first your academic advisors always first reach first point of call um yeah those are all the different and the medical center as well if you need help there did you do any societies um 
Were you too busy studying? <laughs> no. um, I was a part of ACS, but we also started at Eritrean and Ethiopian Society. So I was a part of that, and I really enjoyed doing that as well. But we, because of COVID, we weren't able to like branch out as much as we wanted to. But, but it's still way to meet people, right? Yeah, 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 no, I met so many people, and we kind of like brought all of us, like Eritreans and Ethiopians together, and we had such a good time. Yeah, yeah. so I guess don't panic, because you'll probably have a great time. Yes. And if not, then... Yes. Ask no, for you some will. Help. Yeah, there yeah. really is help out there. So don't worry, don't panic, be patient, and there's help when you need it. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Hannah. And yeah, we'll see you right after this short break. Students come to Kent because they want to learn how to know the law, but they also want to know how to put law into practice and how to think critically about the law. We have activities like Critical Law TV, where students are involved in making a series of, of programmes about contemporary issues in law. We have a Critical Law Conference, where students organise a conference about the law and its contemporary application. We have mooting activities and mock trial activities, and that's all on top of the subjects they are learning as part of their degree programme. There's a huge range of different activities and subjects where our research is making an enormous difference in the world. Issues to do with decolonisation and how to make the world a more racially just place is a key feature of work which takes place in the law school. This is Kent Law Clinic. It's a purpose-built facility for our students and those who choose to do a clinical option get to work with solicitors here to explore real-life cases and interact with clients, members of the public, who come to the clinic for help with their legal problems. We truly are a global community and that makes it attractive to be here because there's so much we can learn from one another because law affects us all. And in the classroom, we draw on one another's experiences wherever we're from in the world. It's a really wonderful place to be able to study, to be able to make new friendships, to be able to make use of the facilities that we have, but also access into London. It's a great place to be.
Hi, I'm Georgia and welcome to the School of Biosciences here at the University of Kent. We're based here in the Stacey Building on the Canterbury campus. The city centre is a half an hour walk away or a short bus ride and has plenty of shops, bars and a rich heritage. The beautiful coastal town of Whitstable is also close by and London is less than an hour away by train. On campus here, we're not far from the medical school, the sports centre and our new study hub. A dedicated space for students studying either chemistry, forensic science, physics or biosciences. The Stacey Building is home to research labs, teaching labs and academic offices and the teaching labs can hold up to 120 students at any one time or be used for separate activities. Here in the School of Biosciences there is a really close proximity between research and teaching, further emphasising the research-led teaching ethos. There is also a strong emphasis on practical work and we cover a wide range of specialisms including microbiology, cell biology, molecular biology, physiology and biochemistry. During our practical classes we are well supported by academics who run the sessions and by demonstrators who are postgraduate students within the school themselves. There is also a team of technicians who maintain the equipment and prepare the resources before our practical classes. This is Teaching Lab 1, the first of three. All of our labs have been set up with COVID secure screens, making sure we're safe during our practical classes. All of our labs have industry standard equipment and during our practical classes, we uphold a strong professional culture and working environment so that we're gaining those valuable skills needed by employers. In our first year, we're introduced to the key pieces of equipment and standard lab techniques. In short, so that we can carry out engaging and informative practicals. This is our second teaching lab and is just one of the places where we get to grips with the cutting edge technical skills representative of scientific research. In our second year, we undertake directed experimental work, becoming progressively more independent, completing a mini project and research led practicals. And finally, we're in our third teaching lab. During our final year, we get the exciting opportunity to undertake a research project in an area that interests us. This is thanks to the skills that we've picked up over the course of the three years during our practical classes. For example, I'm doing research into the biology of the initial stages of pregnancy. All students carrying out a final year wet lab project are based in the teaching labs but many will also get to use the more specialist equipment in the school's research facilities or in their supervisor's research lab. The progress of the practical teaching is gradual, beginning with recipe style practicals and progressing all the way to independent research. Students leave the school as independent scientists and the practical skills developed over the course contribute to our strong graduate employability. And that's the tour. I hope it gave you a great insight into what it's like to study in the School of Biosciences and we hope to see you soon. Startup Journey is a co-curricular programme which students from across the university can take part in if they want to develop their entrepreneurial skills or start a business or develop a business that they already have. It's also about developing the mindsets which is so important in a career as well. It's about um, understanding how we solve problems, coming up with creative solutions, really great team working skills, learning about yourself, your leadership style and all those different things come through the Business Startup Journey.
So my name is Ime, I'm the owner and founder of Jehuku, started in 2016. Uh, it's a London-based clothing label. I took part in the startup journey during the second year of my degree. I got on board with it because prior to me starting it, I was missing a lot of university to travel around and work on my brand. And they were kind of like, where are you, what are you doing? And then my friends said I should join up the business startup journey to try and like help my business elevate a little bit more. And that's when I joined it and it taught me how to properly run a company in terms of putting it on company's house, getting my account sorted, putting together plans and marketing and so and so. And it really took the brand forward maybe like two years forward and for like a year basically I would say. So I learned a lot from that in terms of just getting the fundamentals right which are really key. If it wasn't for that I wouldn't have gotten my internship at Dune London. I would never have made that connection there which is a life changing one without the business style of journey. So it's like, it puts you in rooms you probably could never have been in. Because when I got that internship, the first thing the staff there asked me is, how did you get this? Because I have nothing on my CV linked to fashion. But I got in there without a CV. So it's like, without the style of journey, I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity. My name is Nadia Simpson and I'm the founder of Nadia SE Naturals. We're an ethical beauty and hair care brand and we basically aim to make all natural products that don't contain toxic ingredients. So I actually took part in the business startup journey in my first year of uni. It was really quite an experience and quite scary because I was actually first year and I was going up against a lot of postgraduate students, final year students and I didn't really know a thing about business at the time but it was really supportive. I had a lot of help from Rebecca just to kind of go through my business plan with her and funnily enough it wasn't actually Nadia Essie that I was pitching on the day. I was originally pitching an idea called Vitamatch which was a subscription box service for like natural remedies but as someone that's was in first year. I didn't know much about business or how I could kind of go about it. I didn't know much about e-commerce. And through the business startup journey, it really caused me to really question my business and fail fast. And that's just the reality. You've got to take it on the chin that in business you will fail. Well, it's not necessarily a failure because it led me to start up Nadia Essie, but I realised that that idea wasn't sustainable. But where I could have an actual physical product and I, I already had the formulas and it was something I was using and my flatmates was using and it was working, it was like a no-brainer to kind of just start up Nadia Essie from that. I think the whole pitching process gave me the confidence of just like knowing how to kind of pivot really and taking on the feedback from the judges who are business owners, it was useful. Hi, my name is Mercy Adenergy and I was the winner of the Business Startup Journey 2021. I wanted to create a, like a vegan e-commerce app to help connect vegan food outlets all in one place to try and bind the vegan community together. I was actually really surprised by the experience because I just um, emailed Rebecca and asked her for some advice and then all of a sudden I got all these like resources and all this stuff that she was like helping me with and she helped me get onto the journey. I would have never taken my idea this far if I never went through this, like making a presentation, a pitch deck and an elevator speech is all things that I would never have known how to do or wouldn't have even looked into doing. So yeah, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Just get involved, just do it. Taking part and participating is what it's all about. You're going to meet so many amazing people, have so many amazing experiences and you're just going to come out of it on the other side with a business plan that you might execute then, something that you might do in the future and you'll just be a totally different person, much more employable, much more well-rounded.
Isabel Miller and I'm here to guide you through the experience of studying and living here at the University of Kent and I'm joined by Lewis. Hello, nice to meet you. So tell me about yourself and your course please. Well, as you said, I'm Lewis and I'm a final year student studying biochemistry and the one thing I enjoyed about my course is my lecturers. They've been so supportive and they've made sure that I feel very accommodating, even with my background studying BTEX. So most of my friends studied A-levels and they didn't actually have lab experience because they studied straight for theory and I studied more practical. So in the labs I was more helping them and in, in the theory they were helping me. And then the uh, lecturers didn't say, oh, you should have studied this in your A-levels. They said, what did you study? So that made me feel more welcomed. Yeah, that's lovely. And why biochemistry? Why did you pick that? Um, my family tends to have a few medical conditions. And one of the things that I noticed was the amount of drugs and prescriptions they had. So I thought maybe creating a universal prescription for certain condition. Yeah, and um, how did you find the course? I mean, because you're at the end of your final years, you're graduating soon in November. Um, how would you sum up your three years, course or otherwise? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Good question. I would say this is the best time of my life. I've enjoyed every moment with my friends, the societies I joined, and the course, Stefan. Um, the course was the major thing that made me join the university, the lab experience that I've had, and I don't think I would have ever changed it for the world. And what kind of modules do you do? What's your favourite, would you say? My favourite one was um, scientific communication and public engagement. It was a brand new module introduced this year, and the professor doing it, Professor Dan Lloyd, was probably the best lecturer I've ever had. Sorry for any other lecturers that taught me. <laughs> they're good <but> too. <laughs> they're all amazing, but he was my favourite. He actually was very engaging, and he, he took time f to listen to you. Yeah, and that's important, right? And it's also important to engage young people and old people and everyone, basically, about science. So that's good. That's your favourite module. Uh, so let's talk about the societies. You mentioned those. So um, tell me about some that you're a part of, perhaps. So I'm a president of a society. That's British Sign Language. So I would teach students level one British Sign Language. And some of the other societies that joined was Dodgeball, which was actually helped good for my mental health and stress relief. And I would say I joined more academic modules like biology, chemistry, and I even joined the Physics Society once upon a time, which was um, a bit of a surprise, but I didn't really attend many of those events because I was not really physics mind -made. And I think my favourite society during COVID was the Film Society. They held a virtual quiz every month, and I even got my family involved. Oh, right. Have you got a few um, film facts, maybe, that you know? Ooh, oh, film facts. Yeah. Um, no pressure. Maybe something that people won't know. See, for that so, or a biochemistry fact, that's what I want. Well, Rebel Wilson, who's very known for her Australian acting, yeah. actually has a law degree. Ah. So she, when she does films and based around law, she actually knows what she's talking about. She's actually not. She actually written her own script. Ah, I guess show that you can study and do whatever you want. I guess. And yeah. what are you looking to do? I actually want to improve the communication in science. So, the COVID. Um, my communication with the public was not the best because it wasn't told by a scientist who's actually been behind the scenes and actually seen how the virus has mutated and and we've had politicians tell us how it's really been affected and the hospital numbers. I would rather scientists be able to communicate it to the public in a more public engagement 
friendly. It's right. important uh, for people to know the facts and also, yeah, get to know stuff that's affecting them every day. And, I mean, in terms of every day here at the university, uh, what would you say is your favourite thing to do? There are a few bars, for example, right? Um, one of the few things is I do like drinking with my friends. So Woody's and K-Bar tend to be the most places I would attend. But I actually work at Dolce Jol Vita. So most of our work colleagues tend to hang out afterwards and just talk. Amazing. And um, just lastly, what is your one piece of advice maybe you wish you knew when you were about to choose uni, perhaps? I wish I knew that the university had a mature society. Because when I started, I was 21 and I was considered mature. And meeting a fellow ambassador who's now the president of that society, I didn't even know it existed. So I wish there was a bit more societies at open days and telling you, oh, this is what you can do. Yeah, and well, you've given us an insight into that, so thank you very much for your time and um, telling us all about you. Now let's hear a little bit more from Sabrina telling us about her University of Kent experience. So that was amazing for the Sports Centre, wasn't it, with Izzy. What do you think of the Sports Centre, Sabrina? I use it quite often because I do squash there and their squash courts. Um, also, I do netball, so I find it very modern and spacious. I really like it. It's great. So. You're a student, aren't you? Yes. Tell us a bit about how old you are, what course you do, what mm -hmm. you think of Kent. Okay, so I'm 21, I do history and politics my final year. I love Kent so much, I love the location. I'm from London originally, so it's really close to get here, it's really easy by train. Um, I love that it's close to so many beaches, so the location, I really like it. So tell me, you've joined women's football and netball this year, so yeah. tell me a bit about what that's been like. It's been really good. I really like the societies here. It's the best way to make friends and to meet like-minded people. So that's been really good. And we got great coaches. Like, the facilities are great, like I said before. So it's been really good. I really advise any new student starting out, join a sports society or any society. And what was your first year of Kent like when you first arrived? First year was really good. Again, I think one thing I did right was join societies that I had an interest in because that way you get to meet like-minded people and make friends a lot more easier and quicker. So, yeah, first year was a really good time. And what about second and third? Have you also enjoyed coming back now, now that COVID sort of, you know, definitely. you're back on campus, back with your friends? How's that been? Yeah, there's definitely a buzz on campus even today and every day there's so many students about. It's just so refreshing to see students on campus again. It's really nice and join new societies this year, so making even more friends. And have you joined any more? Is it just football and netball? Um, like that's not I, enough. Yeah, I know so much. <laughs> I'm on the committee for UN Women UK Kent. Wow. So that's another thing that I do. Um, I do MUN, which is a debating society. I'm from a lot of societies. I do a lot of them. Um, but it's great fun and there's always something to do. So. And what's your favourite place on campus? And you can't say venue, the club. <laughs> okay, it's going to be a bit of a boring answer, but I'm going to say the library. That's not boring. People I say it's it. a boring answer, but the library is amazing, isn't it's it? It's really good. Like, the facilities are great. There's also a great cafe. I always get my hot chocolate there every day whenever I go to study. So the library is actually my favourite place. Yeah, it's quite big, isn't it? They've got Very. study sections for quiet sections and louder sections. Yeah, there's three floors, and each floor has its own kind of study group, mm -hmm. study area, and... Um, it gets quieter the way the more you go up. So the silent. Not area. when I sat in the silent no. area. It was never no. quiet. <laughs> no, but really where's quiet. your favourite part in the library? Is it the is it the the chatting area or is it silent area? Um, it depends why I'm there. Sometimes it's a great social space as well with my friends. Yeah. Otherwise, the silent study areas on the top floor they're really great for concentration. Brilliant. Thank you so much, You're Sabrina. Welcome. And we're going to go back to Izzy in a moment. Back at the sports centre.
Isabel and I'm back again to tell you a little bit about what it's like to be here, study, live at the University of Kent. And I'm joined by Cassia. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Uh, so tell us about you and your role here at the University. Brilliant, yeah. So I'm Cassia. I'm the Accessible Information Manager in Student Support and Wellbeing. Um, and we can support students who have disabilities or mental health issues, um, maybe counselling or specific learning differences, to basically learn and work in a way that works for them. So we tailor the support to whatever they need. Mm -hmm. And tell us a bit about, you know, more about what support is on offer here at the university. Certainly, so um, we create inclusive learning plans to make the support as tailored as possible um, and then the lecturers can see that as well so they need maybe need to know if you need, have I don't know, extra time in an exam or um, alternative formats for your materials and things like that. Um, you can speak to a disability advisor or a mental advisor maybe once a week or get a mentor. Um, we have counsellors on campus. Um, so there's loads of support and it really just depends on you what you need. If you need help today, for example, you could go to our triage service and get support today. We also have out of hour service. So if you need anything middle of the night, wake up in a panic, then we can support you. Amazing. And um, what kind of things would you say to, uh, you know, those people, sixth form college um, or otherwise, thinking about coming to university? They're maybe a little bit stressed out or a bit worried about coming here. Of course, yeah. It's a scary time. It's very nerve-wracking, you know, change, big changes, meeting new people. Um, I'd say just be um, really vocal about what you need and, you know, seek support as soon as possible. Um, and talk to people, talk to other people. You know, there's loads of people that are going to be in the same position as you. Um, and you know, talk to them about what you need. Think about your mental health five a day. What do you need to make you feel good today? So maybe do some exercise, sleeping right, eating right, um, seeing someone, not seeing someone, having some space to yourself. Um, think about what works for you. And what kind of things can students do? For example, maybe going to societies might be a good thing to get involved with and, and stuff like that and socialising. There's lots of things to do in the city and on campus, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There's something for everyone. There's a society or an event for everyone. Um, you know, for example, we have a, a board game group for autistic students. Uh, we have loads of peer support groups for, for different groups of students. Um, you can get a walking buddy or a coffee buddy. There's always something going on. Um, there's a, you know, loads of events on the student support and well being social media that you can keep an eye on um, and if you have any questions you can get in touch at any time but there's loads of stuff yeah look, just getting involved in sports getting involved in societies fight if you if there isn't a society that you want then maybe join one that start one up for yourself you know there's loads of different activities yeah and I guess it's important to put yourself out there and be brave I guess yeah or, or not if you're not somebody who, who finds socially socializing easy then uh, there's a way that we can support you individually Exactly. And uh, in terms of, um, you know, the um, advice that you would give that maybe people don't know about and things that are on offer that, you know, they might be surprised to hear. Oh, wow. Lots of things. Um, I think the fact that there's support available at any time is really important to remember. Um, and just trying to reduce the stigma of asking for help, I think, is really important. Everybody needs help at some point. Um, and we can even support people with, with short-term conditions. So if you've broken your leg, for example, and just maybe need an adjustment to um, the lecture that you're going to or the drama workshop that you're going to, we can still support that, um, even though it's not a long-term thing or even if you don't have a diagnosis. Um, and there's just so much great support out there. There's, there's loads of great funding, like, and the career service are fantastic with what they offer. The community uh, life um, team as well, colleges and community life team, there's always stuff going on. On. There's the, 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 the garden in El, near Elliot, there's, there's, there's the labyrinth, there's some really great green spaces on campus. So, um, so just, you know, try something new, just give it a go, walk around the campus, find a good spot to study. And how easy is it to get support and where would people go to get that? Um, you can check out our social media accounts, you can email us, you can come in, you can look at our website. I mean, essentially everything but Pigeon. You can you can contact us in pretty much every way. Um, whatever way works for you, really. Um, and we can talk to you face-to-face -face or on Zoom or Teams or phone if you don't want to come in. So it's really open to, to you how it works for you. And just finally, uh, finally uh, what kind of advice, what one piece of advice would you give to students thinking of coming to this university? Oh, um, 
that's a really great question. Uh, I think just kind of know what works for you um, and be really open and honest about that. Um, if, if you need to be around people, then there's lots of opportunities for you to do that. If you need some alone time, that's okay too. Um, and, you know, to just kind of think about your own well-being and think about your own health, mental health and seek support when you need it. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us no today. Problem. I'm sure you've helped a lot of people by saying all of that. <laughs> no problem. Lovely. Um, well, meet. the next video coming up is actually hearing a student story from Iowa, so enjoy. The reason why I chose Kent was because um, I found out that it ranked pretty highly for my degree um, and on top of that I fell in love with the idea of a campus university. I liked the fact that it would be like a mini community and I would really get the full university experience regardless and everything I needed would be on campus, just a short walk away from my foundation. My degree is law, um, like most law students I got the typical thing growing up where I like to argue so why don't I become a lawyer. Um, on top of that I was really interested in human rights and human rights law and civil rights law so that was one of the big motivating factors for me choosing law. I'm in third year now so there's been a lot of academic pieces of work. Um, I would probably say the one I'm most proud of is the one I graded the most highly for which was one in law and medical ethics. Kent was my first choice university, the university that I wanted to go to the most, the one that I was working towards so when I found out that I had gotten a place that I was ugh, so happy, like beyond words. Probably the fact that it's such a good university but at the same time I don't feel like I have any of the pressures that like a typical Russell Group University may have on them like the, the typical pressures to like outperform and do like like absolute best out of the class. I feel like Kent has a nice balance between um, achieving well but also you know making sure that you're taking the time to take care of yourself. The advice I'd give a student coming to Kent would be enjoy every single moment. My time here has flown by and everyone always says that but I never really believed it. Literally cherish every moment and be open to making friends because I've made friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life here. Anthropology is the study of human variation, both uh, cultural and biological variation. It involves the social aspects such as like economics and religious studies but also involves the biological side which is more forensics and archaeology as well. Studying environmental social sciences has given me confidence about a topic that I'm really passionate about and has made me feel knowledgeable about all the issues that we're currently facing. This anthropology course has really sh helped shape my views and it's just like given me a greater perspective of like the world as well. Hello everyone, my name is Kate and I'm a recruitment officer here at the University of Kent and these are my top tips for writing a great personal statement. Firstly, start as soon as possible. This will give you time to plan and think of what you want to include within your personal statement. Remember, you need to ensure that you're backing up any points you make with real life examples. So have a think about your academic life as well as any extracurricular activities that you have under your belt. What can you include to make you stand out? Secondly, don't get too caught up in the opening sentence. The chances are every university will have heard every quote and cliche out there. So just ensure you are clear and concise with the points you are making and you'll be good to go. Number three, remember even if you are applying for multiple universities, you can only submit one personal statement. So make sure you don't mention a specific university or campus. And lastly, check your personal statement thoroughly before you submit your UCAS application. Sounds obvious, but it does make all the difference. For more information, go to UCAS.com.
Hello, I'm Rodri and I'm joined by Mel Clulo, who's the Director of Sport here at Kent. So we're going to have a chat about what kind of sports facilities and societies are on offer here at Kent. So what facilities are on offer yeah. here at Kent? Um, so we've got, a, I think, a fantastic range of um, facilities, some which have recently been upgraded. Um, so out, out, our outdoor facilities in Parkwood, we've got two 3G pitches, uh, an AstroTurf pitch, four indoor tennis courts and a load of grass pitches. Um, and then up here at the sports centre, we've, we've got a gym, we've got three sports halls, uh, one of which um, has an NBA, so a National Basketball Association, um, accredited surface in it, and it's the only one of its kind in the UK. So how does it work with memberships and getting access to these facilities? Um, if you are a first year or you are living on campus as a second or third year, it's free. Um, so basically all of those uh, facilities that I've listed and any form of activity is, is included in that membership. The only caveat to it is if you join one of um, Kent Union's student clubs or societies, then you'd have to pay a fee to that. But you know, the aim of it is to create friendships, communities and get people active. Is there a good sports community here at Kent? I'm biased, um, but yeah, I think I think we have a fantastic array, range of options. I think there's over 60 sports clubs, there's over 200 societies. Um, so I feel there's very few um, students that would come to Kent and we would be able to you know, accommodate them with something that they would like to do. And what kind of societies are on offer here? Um, so we've got your... I guess your common ones, rugby, football, um, cricket, hockey, and then we sort of go into corf ball, handball, futsal, they're sort of the up and coming ones. And then there's loads of dance societies, there's a Quidditch society. Um, so yeah, like I say, I think there's lots of opportunity for, for students to be active on campus. And if you're wanting to watch sport in Kent, what kind of options are there there? If you want to watch it, um, Wednesday afternoons is the big university fixtures. Um, but I think there's also, you know, if you want to watch the Premier League or, you know, sort of the, the professional sports, then there's plenty of student bars on campus with TVs that will be screening, screen, screening those activities. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of things to do. And uh, personally, what's your favourite part of this campus? Oh, it's, it's days like today. I think when you, once you come up onto campus, you realise we actually cater for everything We're from from food, from the co-op shop, from sports activities, from student services, well-being. We've got a cinema, we've got a theatre. Um, so it really does, I think, bring that sense of community um, to any student life. Well, thank you very much. We now are going back to another video. It's the world's largest community arts event. It's a hugely important theme. It's a really, really um, amazing bunch of artists putting this whole thing together. Seeing children walking, uh, singing, celebrating and welcoming Amal means a lot for me. I know these small actions can have a bigger difference in the lives of these children. I think we couldn't imagine just uh, what, what a powerful and moving spectacle it would be. Amal herself is is just a remarkable creation. It was just wonderful to see how many people showed up to, to greet her. We had a sense it might be hundreds, but it was very clearly thousands. I think it was great that we had uh, like student-made puppets with students operating them interacting with them all. What this provides is an opportunity for students that is it's pretty special and pretty unusual. I know the smile, I know the impact and the power of showing that you are not alone, Amal, in this country. You are not alone, children in this country.
Hi, my name is Ogar. Welcome to the University of Kent's Canterbury campus. So this is Templeman Library. It's got so much study spaces for you and your friends to get some work done. It's got over a million books and journals for you to do your work. And also the library staff are a dedicated team of people to help you and answer any questions that you might have. So welcome to the plaza. This is normally where the hub of activity takes place on campus. There's loads of places to eat and drink with your friends with. There's also a bookshop and also one of the two of the co-ops on campus. Behind me is a sports centre here at the University of Kent. There's something for everyone. There's a gym, fitness and dance studios, martial arts training areas and even a physio clinic. With sport and fitness at the University of Kent, you name it, we got it. Not far from the sports centre, you have Parkwood Student Village. Parkwood is an amazing place to meet amazing people. I met some of my best friends here in my first year. There's other areas to live on campus, such as Keynes, Turin and Darwin. Parkwood is next to our campus pub Woodies, which is a great place to relax and socialise with friends. So across the street from Parkwood, you have the sports field and the pavilion. On Wednesdays, sports teams can be found training or playing against other unis. So we're back in the centre of campus and we're outside the Gulbenkian. The Gulbenkian is a place of entertainment here on campus. It's a cinema, it's a theatre, it's also got a music hall called the Collier Ferguson. But the Gulbenkian has so many shows, whether that's comedy, theatre, dance, and if you're part of a performance society here at the University of Kent, you might have the opportunity to perform here, just like I did when I was a student. So saving the best place for last, it's many people's favourite places on campus. It's the one and only, the campus green. It's got a wonderful view of the cathedral, plenty of wide open space, and what better view to have of the city of Canterbury. Hello, I'm Isabel and I'm back again to tell you all things about the University of Kent, what it's like to live and study here. And I've got another guest with me today. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Janet. I'm the Erasmus Placement Coordinator in International Partnerships. Amazing. So tell us a little bit more about the year abroad. What can people expect? Well, it's an amazing experience and um, you can do all sorts of different things. You can study abroad at one of our really prestigious partner universities. Um, some students who are doing language degrees can choose to do a work placement instead or an assistantship at a school. Um, so really different experiences in all the different options that they have. Um, we have uh, opportunities for politics students to go and study in the US. You could study anthropology in Japan. Um, you could study psychology in Germany, um, all sorts of different experiences. Oh, that's exciting. Is there anything that people might be surprised to know about the year in options? Um, well, we also have... Um, Abroad options, options. sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, Short-term options. For, so if you're not keen on spending a whole academic year away or um, you want to add to your experience, you could do um, a summer school at one of our partner universities or a short-term work placement, and we can offer some funding to help you make the most of that. So we've had um, help students to go and do summer schools, uh, learning Italian in Venice, um, or studying politics in Madrid, um, but also doing work placements in all sorts of different places, Malta, um, Honduras, um, all sorts of places. Yeah, it's exciting. It's the prospect of travelling the world and learning. It's quite yeah. exciting, isn't it? I mean, why should students come to the University of Kent and perhaps choose a year abroad? Um, I think we're really supportive. Um, I work in a small team and we're really focused on study abroad um, and so we're available, you can email us, make an appointment, just have a chat if you have any worries about going abroad, you're not sure if you want to go, uh, you can just phone us and we'll have a chat with you and talk through all of the options. 
Um, my colleague studied and worked in America. I studied in Switzerland. Um, my co other colleague actually did work abroad in the UK as an international student. So we have the experience ourselves. We know what it's like. Um, and so we can provide a lot of support that way. And we have a lot of knowledge about our partner universities and about what people can do and uh, what, uh, what things they might need to think at, about when they're making a decision. Can you tell us maybe a couple of the partner universities, maybe? Um, well, we have partner universities in California. They're really popular, San Diego State. Um, we have a partnership with the Sorbonne in Paris for philosophy, um, the Freie Universität in Berlin. Um, we have a partner in Singapore, Nanyang Technological University. We have um, Hong Kong University. Um, all sorts of different places um, around the world in Latin America as well. Um, Universidad del Rosario in Bogota in Colombia, that's a great one. We have students participating in a, a law summer school, uh, will, will be shortly. Um, so all sorts of different things you can do. Yeah, and I mean, the prospect of that is pretty scary, just being in a brand new place for a whole year. I mean, I'd be nervous. Uh, what advice would you give to people maybe thinking that? Um, I would say, yes, it is um, quite nerve-wracking, particularly the preparation and the waiting to go. Uh, but I would say go for it. Um, it's a really amazing experience. And it, you will find that some things are difficult and there will be some things that you don't like which is life, um, but um, if you go for it and you, you take the opportunities that you have, you'll really enjoy it and really um, find it a beneficial experience. And we will find with the students when they come back, um, and I found myself, sometimes it's the things that we found hard which have been the most valuable. The, the times when we've grown, uh, the times when we've got new skills have been where we've had to work through difficulties um, and have to, uh, to keep going even though we're feeling quite anxious about going or um, finding something quite difficult and are getting through that. I mean, it's the same with, with any experience, university work. If you uh, work through a, a difficult experience, you've grown as an individual. And then when you come to go into a job interview or write your CV, you can put really valuable experience into that and say, well, actually, I've got amazing resilience, or I've got amazing problem-solving skills because I worked on uh, administration at my university and it was really difficult and I found it a struggle but I got through it and I successfully uh, completed my year abroad and um, that's really valued by employers to have that val uh, valuable intercultural experience and those skills um, for work, the workplace. Yeah, and I guess job prospects is something that people, you know, who are, you know, yeah. college, sixth form, they're thinking about getting a job by the end of it. So you would say it's kind of like a helpful thing for it's, them. As well. It's really helpful and not just study abroad because that is an amazing thing and that's what my team is mostly involved in but also for a year in industry or a placement year. Um, you, can, you can work in the UK, but you could also do a placement abroad. So you're getting not just the chance to put your academic experience into practice, but you're getting the intercultural experience as well, possibly building some new language skills or building on your existing language skills. And um, you have a great, a great time and a new experience of a different way of working. So um, it's really, really valuable. And of course, you have a lot of fun, meet some great people and um, eat a lot of interesting food, see interesting things. And yeah, I can imagine amazing employers time. think that practical experience of actually doing the job is like a massive thing for them, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and just for work placement, of course, you've, it's very clear you've got those skills and you can show the um, uh, report from your um, host organisation, but also for study abroad, when you're having to plan your budget, when you're having to uh, manage your workload in a different university, um, when you're having to cope with maybe quite complex administration for that university, because they, they are very different from Kent, in, and some of them are much more hands-on in terms of paperwork. <laughs> yeah. And so you might not be actually doing a job there, but you're getting really valuable skills which you can then take into the workplace and um, just have that, that experience of, okay, well, they're doing things differently, but I've got used to people doing things differently because I spent a year abroad in, I don't know, Finland. And um, so you've, you've just got that adaptability and flexibility and, and the resilience to when something is stressful, you know you coped before 
you got through it really well and um, you've got that confidence to say well actually I might be feeling a bit stressed about this but I'm going to do it anyway because I got through it before and I had an amazing time. Yeah confidence is huge I mean yeah. what's um, the final word perhaps the final piece of advice you would give to people who maybe are here on the open day and um, what would you say to them? I would say go f just go for it and uh, you might um, learn something new, you might experience something new, you might have a whole new career path at the end of it. Who knows? Just go for it. Perfect. Lovely words from you there. And uh, thank you very much for your time. You. Um, so we'll just uh, see a video about student life at Kent.
I'm in Beckett Court at the moment. I'm joined by Sean Rowe, who's going to talk to me a bit about the accommodation here on offer at Kent. So could you tell me a bit about what kind of accommodation is on offer here for students? Yeah, sure. So um, at the Canterbury campus, we have a huge range of accommodation. So we have um, self-catered ensuite rooms. We have park-catered ensuite rooms. Um, we have 39-week contracts here. We have students that are on uh, short-term programs of studies. So they're here for maybe one term or two terms. Um, so really, we have accommodation that suits all types of students. And for students who are thinking about applying and maybe worrying about accommodation, do you have any advice for them? So I would say um, obviously visit the accommodation web pages, have a really good look at what we're able to offer you. Um, there's a whole huge range of different costs, so I would say that's a big factor when students are choosing their different types of accommodation. We do ask students to choose four different preferences. Um, so that gives us an opportunity to allocate them in something that is right for them. Um, and so about the campus itself, what kind of facilities are there for those that are living here on campus? There's loads of facilities on campus. We have um, about 12 different catering outlets around the campus. Um, we've got two supermarkets on campus. There's a huge library centrally located. Um, Kent Union hold lots of different activities and social events for the students. Um, every bedroom comes with free gym sports membership, so students can, you know, really take that, use all the classes, sports facilities, etc. on campus. Um, yeah, so there's so much to do. And personally, what's your favourite bit of the campus? Um, for me, I, I just love the campus, the fact that it's set in about 300 acres of parkland. Um, especially during the summer months, you know, it is such a beautiful campus and there is always something to do and there's always a buzz on the campus as well, just to go for a walk at lunch and see all the students taking part in various activities. And for, for students who are looking at accommodation, what do you think is the most important thing for them to consider? I think definitely the cost. So we have accommodation which is just over £5,000 for their 39 week academic programme of study and it ranges right up to sort of £8,630. So we, we do genuinely have accommodation to suit all budgets. Um, you know, think about whether you can share bathroom facilities, whether you're, whether you're able to cook for yourself or whether you would prefer catered accommodation. Um, all of the information, as I said, is on the accommodation web pages, so really do have a good look um, before you make your accommodation application. Okay, thank you very much. And now we've got a short video for you. Hello, my name's Karen Cox and I'm the Vice-Chancellor here at the University of Kent and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to our University Open Days. I hope that you find all that you need to know about studying here at the University. It is really a fantastic place to live, to learn and to study and I'm really pleased that you've chosen us as a potential place for you to think about your university career. From day one you'll experience our excellent teaching whether that's online or in person, in our laboratories, classrooms or studios. We have excellent facilities here, excellent staff and you'll also be exposed to world-class research. The University of Kent is a really friendly and supportive community. You'll have lots of opportunities to meet new people, to meet people from around the world and that is just such a fantastic opportunity for broadening horizons and for thinking about the kind of career that you want in the future. You'll also have lots of support to help you study and make the most of your time and there's loads of clubs, societies and volunteering opportunities as well. It really is a fantastic place to be. I look forward to welcoming you to our university, our community and to also helping you think about your future while you're with us. Hello, I'm Professor Georgina Ransley Demora, and Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Strategy, Planning and Performance at the University of Kent. I'd like to welcome you to the University of Kent and to our open day today. I hope you feel at home and that we'll be welcoming you here as a student in the future. If you're here supporting a friend or family member today, a very warm welcome to you too. I've often been asked what makes Kent special and I always have the same answer. It's our people. Our students and colleagues create an incredibly welcoming, inclusive and friendly community 
which you will experience as you walk across campus. After a very short time being here, you will always bump into someone you know. Our students have described Kent as amazing, exciting and life-changing, and there are many reasons why, but our campuses are definitely one of them. They're the perfect backdrop to your university experience and a safe and welcoming place to make your home away from home. They'll be where you make lifelong friends and create memories to treasure. You'll have mammoth study sessions in the library, transformative classes, and have nights out that you'll probably still be laughing about in 20 years time. If you're at the Canterbury campus today, you'll see how beautiful and green it is as you walk around. Make sure you take in the spectacular view of the city and Canterbury Cathedral from the slopes by the library. It's one of the most popular places on campus, especially for revision, picnics and relaxation. If you're staying for longer, you might explore Canterbury. Here you'll find plenty of lovely independent shops, bars and cafes. Kent is a beautiful county and is just under an hour away from London on the train. Our campuses are on bus routes, which makes exploring the local area easy and affordable. We're incredibly lucky to be near the sea, with miles of stunning coastline close by. It's a lovely place to live and study, and many of our students remain in the area after they've graduated. Another reason our students describe Kent as life-changing is because every year, Kent students and graduates achieve amazing things. They make a global impact working for international organisations. They launch businesses and social enterprises. We have lots of students who've made their mark in media, music and sport. You'll probably learn more about them today. Reaching your potential goes beyond getting a great degree and we offer an array of opportunities to develop your skills and confidence. For example, we offer a pioneering business startup journey programme to help launch your enterprise. Alongside careers talks, workshops and fairs, we also have strong industry networks and opportunities to secure a work placement. Building your future career, or careers, isn't about waiting for graduation, it's about what you can do along the way. And we're here to help you with that, to hone your skills, develop your networks and raise your profile. We give you the freedom to be yourself, to try new things and dream big, the sky is the limit, and that's why our students say their time at Kent is life-changing. Enjoy your visit with us today. Remember to ask lots of questions, picture yourself here, and take the time to absorb as much as you can. But if you have any questions, there will always be someone to help you, and you can come back for another visit before you join our world.
everyone, my name's Amelia and I'm a second year forensic science student and these are my friends. Hi, I'm, I'm Shemek. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shemek. I study biomedical sciences. I'm a second year student. Hi, I'm Katie. I study forensics. I'm a first year student. And today we're going to be showing you our favourite places in Canterbury. So let's jump go! right into it. Let's go. <laughs> At least once in the summer. At least once, at least once in the summer. It's very it's iconic. Really nice and um, sure. really good view. Yeah, it has a really good view of the cathedral, and that will be our next stop. Ooh. Yes, we're here. This is a must-see place. This, this is, is an iconic place. This is what makes Canterbury Cathedral. This is the oldest cathedral in England. Facts. Wow. If you're ever in Canterbury, definitely come see the cathedral. This is Cafe Chambers and they do really good pancakes and brunch. They also have loads of vegan options and they've decorated the place so nicely and they've also got like a cute little garden area outside uh, which has a really good view of the cathedral. And then literally right opposite is this chocolate cafe um, and if you've got a sweet tooth like me I think you'd also really like it. Favorite place in Canterbury, Westgate Gardens. Westgate Gardens. Can I get a round of applause? Yeah. This is a great place to take picnics in the summer and um, take lots of really good Instagram pictures, <laughs> as well as mental health walks after stressful exams. Yes, yep, period. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the scenes here are just beautiful and perfect for distressing. You can feed the ducks and just mess around and have fun. Uh, here's us playing a stick game. Two, one. Why is gonna be a winner? Oh no, is that on? Oh, that's yours! But one of my favourite activities to do in Canterbury would be to definitely do water sports along the river. Uh, here's me and my friends kayaking in the summer. It was such a good time, and if you can only do one thing in this video, it would definitely be to go along the river. Now we just wanted to show you our favourite tree. Um, it's just a really thick tree, um, and we find it really funny. Uh, so if you're in Canterbury, try see if you can try and spot it. And with that, that concludes our vlog. We hope you guys enjoyed and that this gave you some insight into Canterbury. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.
I'm Isabel and I'm back again to tell you more about the University of Kent and I have a guest with me again. So tell me a little bit about yourself and your role, please. Thank you. Hello, I'm Alex. I'm a PhD student in Classics. I've been at University of Kent since 2016 as an undergraduate and a master's student and I'm also an outreach ambassador and tutor. Firstly, let's talk about the route in for a mature student. Tell me a little bit about how that works. Um, so, um, many mature students come in already with qualifications like A-levels or whatever from school, but um, the university also offers a uh, qualification which is nationally recognised, uh, which is uh, an access course, access to higher education, and what that does is gives mature students a way to get those qualifications if they've been out of study for a, a number of years or whatever to just learn how to be a student again get used to that get those skills to come in and we teach that in the evenings as well as it being taught at local colleges all over the country. Nice and can you tell me a bit about your experience and how you uh, came to the University of Kent as well? Yes, yeah, so I finished uh, my A-levels in 1993, so they were a bit old. Um, so I did an access course at Canterbury College uh, for a year full-time and um, applied for University of, of, of Kent and um, also to Canterbury Christchurch University and accepted the offer here. Um, I've been very, very happy here. I've been here since, as I said, 2016, so I'm, I'm quite content. <laughs> yeah, and what would you say to people thinking about doing a university course or really trying to get into education? again but they just don't know how to or they're fearful maybe I, I think the point is that it's never too late whether you do university immediately after school you take a year out 10 20 50 years whatever it is it's never too late to come back and engage with that and universities generally and certainly Kent in my experience is very very welcoming to um, to mature students and, and indeed students of all ages whatever it is that you want to study yeah, and how did it feel for you to become a student again? I bet it's nice, you know, I mean, every day's a learning day, right? But, I mean, mm. um, going back to university is quite exciting. So. It, it was exciting. It was also terrifying, not, not going to lie to you, but um, it's a really welcoming community. I enjoy my job. I love my studies. And I've been made generally very, very welcome here. I've made astonishing friends, and I wouldn't change this experience for the world. Oh, that's nice. And tell me about some of the support that's available for the University of Kent. I mean, you're here to help, for example, right? Sure. So we're, we're here to help. And as ambassadors, we do a lot of work in schools and colleges, smoothing that process, demystifying it a little bit and, and, and helping students understand that further education and higher education is for them if they want that. Um, but there are a lot of support services here as well. Our Student Support and Wellbeing Department are, are awesome and I speak from personal experience there. Uh, our Student Learning and Advisory Service help with academic support in the academic departments. There are advisors and, and our amazing teaching and lecturing staff as well as the professional services staff who are here to look after us as well and they work so hard all of them um, there's always somebody to turn to even if it's IT issues or whatever it is always I have IT to issues. use those quite a lot because I'm rubbish at that stuff <laughs> no that's cool and you're doing a PhD though can you tell I me am. a little bit about that and um, actually the subject and it's pretty fascinating stuff right uh, yeah it's quite scary I've just started so I'm taking mine part time so a PhD is the third level of study after an undergraduate degree and then a master's and basically you have either three years full-time or six years part-time as mine is and you work very closely with two supervisors a main supervisor and a secondary one in the academic department and you do a research project and and, and write what's for me a, an essay something like a hundred a hundred thousand words um, and I'm working on the exile poetry of the Roman poet Ovid in Latin uh, which I absolutely adore uh, it's hard work, hard work. It's it's <laughs> difficult because time management is down to you. It's, there's no lectures or anything like that. So you really do have to focus and care about it and love it. And luckily I do. I've got awesome supervisors, so, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And what are you hoping to get into after your PhD? Becoming a doctor? <laughs> yeah, well, certainly that will give me the chance to call myself Dr Alex, so that would <laughs> yeah. be very cool. But actually what I really want to do is outreach. I've thoroughly enjoyed that. As much as I love being a student, I love doing outreach work more. I've met again amazing staff amazing students that we've worked with as well as the ambassadors and I know many ambassadors working here today who are familiar faces to me um, but also the students we work with and you see firsthand the benefits that has you talk to students in their school you help them with questions you motivate them and and it no motivates wrong inspire them to take their own path 
and then suddenly you turn around on campus and they're standing behind you going, hi, I'm a student, you worked in my school. And that's astonishing. Um, and I love that work. I, it's, it's really valuable to, to help everybody to realise their full potential, whatever their background is, whatever it is, you know, whatever experience they've had at school, whatever it is. So I, I love that, and that's really what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, and would you say, I mean, getting different perspectives, you know, and with experience and different kinds of people coming together, doesn't yeah. it just make it a better place to learn? You end up learning more. Absolutely. Um, you... you staff in all sorts of different subjects students studying different subjects and in the mature student society students from all backgrounds all ages all life experiences so i grew up in a very small town that i won't name because it's not that far from here um and really quite isolated but being here is so inspiring and it just really opens up you to to the world and, and, and to all the options out there. So, yeah, I, I love being here, which is probably obvious from what I've said. <laughs> yeah, that's good news. Good news. <laughs> yeah, and just um, a final word from you, perhaps mm. some advice, maybe something that mm. you would have liked to know um, when you were about to go to university. What would you say? Um, I think a couple of things really. Read everything that the university sends. They, they communicate with students by email, and there are loads of opportunities in there as well as really important things that you need to know. So read absolutely every email the university sends you before, during the application process, and once you're a student, whichever university that is. Um, but also study something that fascinates you, that you love, that really excites you, that makes you want to get out of bed in the morning and go to the lectures, uh, and studying something which you're really personally interested in is so important just to make sure that you get that really good experience at university and then you can throw yourself into all the other opportunities there are here uh, whether it's student societies or, or, or sports or, or different talks there are around get the best out of it three years goes really quickly <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I mean you've stayed to do a master's and a PhD yeah. you, no well thank you so much for your time and thank you for You're talking welcome. about no your problem. experiences and we'll be back after a short break
Marjorie, and I'm joined by Dan Harding, and we're going to have a chat about extracurricular music here on the Canterbury campus. So could you tell me a bit about what is on offer here in Canterbury? Yep, we're, a, we're an extracurricular facility, so the idea is we're catering for students who are not necessarily studying music, but they are reading degrees in all manner of subjects, but they still want to come along and still participate in ensemble music making, and, and we help for, offer a range of extracurricular music programmes across the course of the academic year. And what, what, what's the community like here when it comes to music? It's very vibrant, as you can imagine. There are people who are enthusiastic about performing. It's primarily open to members of the university community, so it's undergraduates and postgraduates, and staff as well. Uh, staff are invited to come along and take part. But there's also a strong element drawn from the local community. And the idea is that during evenings and weekends, and occasionally some afternoons as well, people come together and rehearse regularly uh, and we put on a series of concerts, usually at the end of each term uh, and at the end of the year we have a summer music week which is our music festival, a sort of musical farewell to the entire academic year. Well I lived in Medway for the last four years and they have music society every Tuesday which is a great night of just live music. What kind of live music is there on offer on campus in Canterbury and in Canterbury and maybe even wider in Kent? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we run uh, rehearsal, ensemble rehearsals throughout the week. So there's a Monday night chorus rehearsal, a Tuesday night is chamber choir, Wednesday afternoon is string symphonia, Wednesday evening is concert band and big band, Thursday night is symphony orchestra, um, and as part of that, there's a very large and vibrant music society. There's the live music society, uh, and there's also uh, musical theatre society who do showcases and they do a production each year in the spring. So uh, depending on, on what it is that, that students or staff do, there's opportunities to sing, play instruments. Um, here in Collier Ferguson, where we're chatting, we have a suite of practice rooms that are available for people to just come along and unwind and practice uh, whenever they want. But there's also the Collier Ferguson Concert Hall, which is the sort of the main hub of what we do here in the building. Elsewhere on campus, there's Galbankian next door, which has a cabaret stage and the theatre. Um, and there's also Woody's, uh, the bar in the student village just across the road from here. They have uh, a bar and they host like open mic nights and so on. Uh, and obviously down in Canterbury as well, there are various pubs and clubs that do um, open mic sessions and so on. So there are lots of opportunities, whatever you're studying, to still come along and, 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 and perform. Um, so what would you say is your favourite bit about this campus? The favourite bit about this campus is, I think it's the, the fact that it is a campus. We, you know, you have the, the, the various colleges around, then you've got the theatre, you've got the concert hall, you've got the cinema, you've got the library. So there's a lovely a lovely community feel about being up here. It's a wonderful green space with fantastic views down the hill towards the city of Canterbury. And you can see the cathedral in the distance and so on. But it's a lovely green campus that, that, that really, during term, feels very vibrant because there's lots of people doing, you know, going hither and yon, dashing to lectures and seminars, coming here to rehearsals, going next door to the cinema. Um, there's various restaurants and cafes on campus as well. So there's a lovely community buzz to the campus. That, that means during term time particularly, it always feels like a very welcoming space uh, and there's always lots of people around. Thank you very much. My pleasure. We've got another video. I'm Navia and I study business management at the University of Kent. I am currently in my final year of university. Business management is actually one of the most flexible course you can find um, in the whole Kent Business course because first year you've got a lot of uh, mandatory modules that you have to undertake but by the time you reach your second and final year you've got a lot of optional modules so it gives you the flexibility to choose modules that you want to choose or you want to specialise in. 
um, you can, if you want to go into marketing sector, you can pick more marketing modules. If you want to do human resources, you can actually pick more human resource modules. Or if you want more financial um, aspect to your study, you can even choose those modules. So you have the flexibility to choose whatever you want and you've got support available. This degree has given me a lot of opportunities in job sectors as well. Um, you know, I've studied marketing, human resources, I've studied business analytics, entrepreneurship. So I've got a wide range of um, places where I can apply to, wide range of industries I can apply to. Um, I personally do want to get some years of experience and in future then I want to start my business using the experience I've got through a job. Um, so I'm looking for jobs in the marketing sector or even financial sector at the moment. I feel that quality of teaching at Ken Business School is, is one of the major factors what really attracted me to the university and recently um, Ken Business School has also got triple accreditation which makes us top 1% of the university in the world. Um, so that says it all um, but personally as a student I feel that's pretty amazing because I've never actually felt alone, I've never felt that I have to deal with a certain thing that I don't understand by myself because I've always got the support I needed from my lecturers. Um, I just needed to email them, you know, well, I'm really struggling with something, can we just have a quick meeting and, you know, I'll get the response and um, usually they're quick at responding, they're very, very supportive, so it's been, it's been fantastic.
it's Isabel and we are concluding today's open day by um, talking to Rodri. Hello. Um, so let's talk about some of your highlights of the day, please. Well, I have to, my personal highlight was getting a hole in one in the mini golf off camera and then failing miserably on camera. Yeah, and everyone saw that as well. But my favourite bit was definitely the ice cream. I thought that was a great idea to put an ice cream truck out there. Um, but no, it's been great to hear about the different things at the uni. It's been, what do you think? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed just getting to know some of the people around here and find out a bit more about what can really can offer to students. Yes, and I agree. And I hope you've uh, learned a lot today and got a sense of what the University of Kent is like. But until next time, maybe we'll see you in the coming year. Yeah. Goodbye.